really excited to engage in a dialogue with the one and only Tanya Stevens today. Like, beyond excited. Um, what's going on, Pedagogy or not? Nah, what up? Brit Zoe, what up? Um, Keen, Keen, what up? You guys just send, send, tell all your folks you're about to go down. We're about to have a, um, we're about to have one of those dialogues today. Um, I don't know if Tanya's on quite yet. She will be, but before she hops on, I just want to begin by, by describing like how I came to know the genius that is Tanya Stevens. So I, I knew Tanya, of course, before I met her in person through her work. And um, like, you know, tracks like It's a Pity, like like the, the that, that 90s era raw dance hall that was really, really like occupying that space where a lot of really strong and dominant male voices. And then you would hear Tanya Stevens come out. And Tanya always had this incredible energy, incredible honesty, and always brought the energy from a woman's perspective without being apologetic about what it meant to be a woman. Like so she could she could talk sexuality with the dudes, but she could also talk like what love and loss looks like in the same track. And she could make you move. And she has this voice that, you know, the beauty of Tanya's voice is like, it's nothing like it, right? It's not, it's not like a Celine Dionish voice. It's not like a, it's just this uniquely raw and passionate voice that just captures emotion in an amazing way. So, yo, I'm dumb hype to have this conversation with Tanya Stevens. I don't know if she's quite on yet. Um, I see Ren's on. Let me bring Renee, Renee Ratchery in first as we await Tanya Stevens just to talk about the beauty of Tanya Stevens, what our voice is going to mean for us in this dialogue tonight and all that. So Renee, you on there yet, sis? As I wait for Renee, let's just talk Science Genius, right? Um, Science Genius is an initiative that began in New York when I was working to really look at the intersections of hip hop culture and science. And the reason why I thought to bring hip hop and science together is simply because hip hop has always been that raw um, for the streets, perceived to not be something for the intellectual and the academic. And science has always been like this highfalutin, like really, really like for the most intelligent. You know, you have to have money to be able to work in a science lab and access that. And for me, it's always been powerful to be able to bring, you know, those different worlds together. Shout out to Raven Rose. Raven was good. I see you. Um, what up to Sarah Savage? I see you as well. So for me, it's like bringing hip hop to, to, to science always made perfect sense. And then I started thinking, Ren is not ready yet. So, and then I started thinking about, listen, if we could bring us to, to New York and connect these two things, Tanya's on. What up, Tanya? What up, Tanya? Tanya, you got a um, request to be a guest, please. Um, so we can bring the dialogue happening. Let me see if I can figure out a way to do it. Oh, there you are. Boom. You're at it. And so for us to extend that to, um, to dance, it was just like a natural progression. But I digress from all of that because the queen herself is officially in the building. So everything I was saying before, forget that. Toss it out the window. Except for the immense accolades that I shared before. But this is Tanya Stevens, y'all. Um, man. I, like, so... Every time you hop on through an IG live and things like that too, or like when we have a phone conversation, it always takes me, Tanya, a, a good three minutes. And I know you don't believe in this stuff, and we're going to talk about that, but it always takes me a good two, three minutes to be like, yo, I know Tanya Stevens. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I still, you know, I still, I still need like a moment or two to recognize that I am talking to you and that we have a vibe and that we see the world in similar ways and uh, I just want to begin by just saying much honor, much respect. And I know, again, you're not a person who needs those things, and you're not a person who um, who seeks those things, and that's why I'm always excited to give them to you because, you know, sometimes there are folks who desire that, like they need that for their ego, and I know you don't need it. So I want to start by saying salute to you, queen, um, genius, yes. architect, interrupter, uh, progressive, uh, critical thinker, um, like I am always in awe to be in your presence, truly. No, you know what? No, they, I. It's the same for me. Mm. I, I am really, really honored to know you. I am happy to share space with you, and I'm glad we're on the same side. 
it makes me feel like I'm I'm getting it right mm. because I watch your work and I am I have goosebumps now talking. <laughs> so it's the same for me and it, it it means a lot to hear that coming from you because I want to be right. I want to be on the right side of history. Our mm. history. <laughs> And and I'm very happy to be here and to be in this with you. You are amazing. I love this. I love what you guys are doing. I really do. And I wish I had this when I was going to school. Mm -hmm. And love to my sister Renee, who's our, our the, the 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 other piece of this whole equation. But yes. I, I want to start there. You said, you know, I wish I had this when I was going to school. So anybody who's on here knows when we talk science, we're talking about bringing science in Jamaica to dance hall music, merging those two things together bringing this discipline that's supposed to be just for those people and dance all that they say is just for those people and say we're going to mix it up and i want to go back to your story what was tanya stevens like when she was in school what was what what made you come alive in school what could you wish you could do differently if you if you could go back like i want to hear your school story mm. well i when i was in school i was a little bit closer to the nerdy side Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, <laughs> it's hard to believe, no. Um, I have strayed so far from that, but um, I really was a bookworm. And mm -hmm. the times when I found myself getting in trouble was when I was under-challenged. And this is one of the reasons why I say I wish I had this, because um, this is something that would have filled those gaps. Mm -hmm. That's given me something to look forward to, something to... to you know, challenge that extra energy that I had that was never utilized. Um, Yo, I, was really, I was extremely into books. I love stories. I love telling them. I love reading them. I loved experiencing the world through other people's eyes. Um, and it turned out well. <laughs> and I'm, I'm it definitely really did. It turned out well. You know, Tanya, you said something that really struck me. Because when, whenever we frame this science genius thing, we oftentimes frame it as something to do for the kids who've been disengaged or something for those kids who are on the wrong side of the tracks who need to be able to reconnect. But you said something really provocative, which was when you were in school, you were actually on a nerdy side, you were doing well, and you also had an energy that was not challenged. And I think when we think about this, we have to look at it two ways. Like this is for the kids who are not being engaged, but it's also for the kids who are not being challenged because they have an energy that's connected to the culture that's not bringing, being put forth. Talk about that for me, like this idea of, I am a nerd, but I'm also a musician and an artist, and I had to, different points in my life, choose different sides. So talk through that, that piece of like, being smart but needing more, and then going towards more, and leaving a the, leaving the side that was like bookwormish, you know what I mean, and then coming back together. I wanna hear that story. Yeah, well, first of all, it's a shame that it, it became a choice that I had to depart from one to have the other because that is not true in life at all. Mm -hmm. You can have both. You can be a bookworm and still embrace your culture. And there's room for culture in every field. Mm -hmm. So there's no need for, I hope these kids know better than I did. Uh, and um, are be back. Um, you know, Instagram did not want us to be great, but they're not going to steal our joy and thunder. So we're going to reconnect um bring tanya stevens back and continue this powerful conversation um about the intersections of culture and education and this idea of the challenges that we give young folks so instagram did not want us to be great but we're going to be great anyway i'm glad y'all checking back in thank you Savas savage for checking back in thank you artie for checking back in renee is back in the building um i'm gonna check my sister tanya to make sure she's back on with us not quite yet, but she will be. And, um, and then when she's back on, we'll reconnect. I think what's going on now is that IG is um, playing with how much time they give folks. But we're going to jump right back into the conversation. Um, re really quickly, y'all. I want us to also understand the fact that we logged on, logged off because IG logged us back out and came back on is also capturing of the essence of Science Genius. Because what's happening is we are responsive in real time to where society is taking us, right? So, yeah, we log off and it went wrong. So what if it went wrong? A good teacher always understands that he'll always circle back and make it happen again. So we're going to get Tanya back on. 
like nothing ever happened, jump back deep into the dialogue, um, and, and, not, and not miss a step and not miss a beat. And I think that that, and many times, is what's missing in education, is that educators are waiting for the script to be perfect before they can do their work. And if they're waiting for everything to be perfect, it's never going to be perfect. But you've got to find a way that in the midst of the challenges and the obstacles, that you're creative and imaginative enough to still meet the needs of the audience, right? Like things don't change. We're still going to be on IG. The audience is still going to be there. You're still going to need to get the information. Tanya will find her way back. And even if she didn't, the nature of good teaching is the ability to be nimble. Nimbleness is the essence of good pedagogy. Anybody who charges themselves to be in the role of an educator who does not know how to navigate when things don't go the way the script goes should not be called an educator. So look, just like that, Tanya's back. I'm back. The dialogue continues. We don't miss a beat. Tanya, what's good? I'm back. <laughs> You're back. Yeah. I kind of lost my thread there because I, I didn't, I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I'm a little bit outmoded, which is a good reason for me to be here because while I am lending myself to this mission, I'm also learning from the mm. kids, from everything that's new about our environment and the one you're creating, you guys are creating. So I'm back here. Now remind me where I was because this old lady needs a problem. No, no <laughs> where you were was the perfection because you were talking about the fact that it's a shame in the world that we are forced to make a decision between your yes. former self, which is like a nerdy school kid, and a musician culture self. And like talking about, I, I think where you are going, that society imposes on us a perception that we have to make decisions. So I, yes. I want to hear more about that piece. The, mi the misconception that norm is a fixed space. Mm -hmm. um, norm varies from person to person. What is normal for you is normal for you. Yeah. Um, and so it would be really nice. I would love for not only teachers and students to get involved here, but parents too, because they also need to become a part of this discussion. Understand that your child is not problematic. It's not mm. a problem child. It's not bad pick me. You know, sometimes if I speak for myself, like I tell you, I, I was given really odd choices mm. and sometimes no choice at all. Um, I had to choose between art and biology, and I don't think I should have to, I should have been forced to pick something that I didn't lean towards. And mm. I don't think some of the choices that we pitch against each other actually make sense because some of them complement each other. Um, mm. And so we should let the kids gra gravitate to where their head is. Mm. And, and then we complement that and we become cheerleaders instead of trying to force our narrative on them, you know? And then this, if I had this, no, if, let me tell you, if I had this inside of my school book, every single notebook had lyrics in them. It wasn't my lyrics yet. It wasn't my lyrics yet. It was other people's lyrics. I had Papa San, Lieutenant Stitchy, I had everybody else's lyrics written out in my book. Mm. And that was taboo. I had to hide it. So I didn't have enough books to have a lyric book. So I stuck the lyrics at the back of my notebooks. Wow. <laughs> and it would have been nice if, if they were welcome and, and given a space. Instead yeah. of it being something criminal that I was sneaking and doing, you know, because I really loved it and it, it, it has its place. I used, I used music to remember things like Spanish that I didn't gravitate towards naturally. So I, I, I made a song for, for the first thing that I learned the, the days of the week in, in grade seven. Los dias de la semana son lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, venes, sabado, domingo. I love that it. Was my for remembering the days of the week. Um, and it was never given a place, mm. which would have made it so much, because I never forgot that, and I'm 47 in a, in a, in a few weeks, and I still remember. <laughs> no, so this is great. Like, like, you know, when you speak about these things, Tanya, like my soul gets such so much because, you know, I think about you who were, was genius enough back then to do well in school, and then was genius enough to make it to be the icon that you are. And then I think about all the young folks who have not been given the grace, the opportunity, the luxury, the luck, the circumstances, who are geniuses sitting somewhere that, and that genius could never been revealed because we didn't do our job to allow them to be themselves. And it's like, that's the stuff that keeps me up at night. You know what I mean? That we miss the, we miss the opportunity for all the Tanya Stevenses, all, um, all the Mae Jemisons, all the scientists, musicians, the mixture of the two, because we got so stuck 
in a colonizer's vision of education that we did not allow ourselves to become who we were supposed to be. I I completely agree. And 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 we didn't we 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 refused to allow um our kids to be nurtured to the point where even even the things that you want them to do gets enhanced by the things that they want to do. So for mm. example, if I if I had um been able to combine the culture, the music with the academics, it might have made my music better and mm. could have even made also my academics better. Yeah. Because that is what that is what um learning does. Everything you learn actually helps you to learn something else. This is no, this is a process. It's not it's not a fixed spot. It's a process. So we really ought to be encouraging kids. First of all, we need to allow them to be exposed to everything so they can choose what they want. So mm -hmm. they can see what they naturally gravitate to and then allow stuff like this like Jamaican kids are extremely talented. This is just raw talent. Mm -hmm. Without anybody having ever taught them anything, just look at the baby. The baby have rhythm. The baby yeah. starts out with rhythm. Listen to me. A Caribbean kid, we people them really naturally just talented and amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you allow them to bring all of this amazement, this, mm -hmm. this amazingness, this awesomeness to the classroom with them instead of trying to stifle it and allow it to flourish along with the formal. Yes. You know, there's no end. And, and here's the next thing too, Tanya, that I think is, is, is this idea of to make what is perceived to be informal become the formal is also yeah. part of our work, right? So we want to merge the act, uh, we want to merge the dance hall with the education, but we also want to allow dance hall to have a formal state, a formal place, a formal stature within our communities. And I, a lot of folks say like, you know, why are all the dance hall artists only talking about the same things over and over again. And my response is, because you only gave them permission to talk about the same things over and over again. You only created the space for them to be able to give voice to a version of themselves. So the only music that you allow is the ones that glorify the violence. Don't ask them why they are violence. They tell them the story of what they see, but you never gave them the opportunity to tell a different story. Because once they tell a different story, all of a sudden you don't welcome it anymore. So we have a, we don't, we don't only have like a responsibility to merge our culture with the formal. We have a, a responsibility to make our culture become what is formal to us, yes. re-embracing us in a way that's different. So I want to talk about one thing you mentioned, Tanya, about like the parents and the fact that Science Genius is inviting young people to be able to create their science dance hall songs, but, but also opening it up that if you're a parent, if you're in school, if you left school, if you didn't like school, if you loved school, an opportunity for the adults to also reclaim their youth through this. What are your thoughts about that? Like this idea that I can come back to this at 40, 47, 35, 21, and still reconnect. I think this is a beautiful opportunity because like I tell you, I'm here to also learn from the kids, to be inspired by them, to be re-energized by them. You know, just being in the, in the same space. When I was there, I, was, I didn't even speak much. I was just soaking it up, just mm -hmm. looking at them and the teachers interacting. And it was so comfortable, you know, um, I realized that it was a different kind of energy, kind of atmosphere. There was no tension. Everybody were, were just working together, you know, just, just comfortably easy. working together. Yes. Easy. And, and this, to me, makes learning so much more easy, too. So it's so much easier um, because tension is what prevents us. Pre tension is a block. Yes. So if you get rid of the tension... We get rid of all of the, the fears and the miscommunication and the disconnect. And we, we unite around something that we all already have because we have it. Mm. You know? And then everything else that's coming on board is a plus, is a bonus. We join all of these things together. And I'm telling you, I've watched these kids, they blossom. They look, they look like, they, they really look excited. Yes. And that's you know, like, just to see them excited to learn, passionate yeah. about learning. And then you touch on something that we need to go to, right? So you said about tension, then you talked about music, and I want to talk about this idea of music as therapy, music as tension release, that writing a rhyme about science content makes the labor of learning science eased and turns it into fun. What are your thoughts on the therapeutic nature of dance hall music? Oh, wow, don't even get me started, because maybe I'm in a biased position 
to talk about <laughs> that because dancehall has been my I grew up in dancehall. Mm. So obviously I I credit dancehall and a space for for most of what I am. Um mm. but because this is something that we do naturally because it's it's our go to um expression it's our go to um venting it's our go to for everything um for most of us if not all um i think it has to be therapeutic mm-hmm. it's where we we go to to f- forget the stress of work it's where we go I, i remember when i was going to high school and they used to allow us to have teen jams on some fridays mm-hmm. that was a beautiful end to a school week I couldn't mm-hmm. stay for long because I didn't have permission to go. So I could only catch the very first part before people started dancing. So I would mostly dance alone. But it was amazing. Mm-hmm. And that was dancehall. That was dancehall. That was the same songs that I was writing in the back of my books. Mm-hmm. And it's what it's it was something to look forward to. So we would if we if we behaved well, we got it. So we would behave well because we wanted it. Yeah. Uh, And then when we were there this was a chance for us to to be just a family and not and not some robot sitting around a desk and doing exactly what is told of us exactly the same thing all the time it was us just letting our hair down and just you know just being some kids yes um, really it worked it really worked so Yo, I, I wanted to do a couple of things kind because you hitting us with so many gems but real real dad shorty from Guyana we are looking for you to write your science genius rap You know what I'm saying? Nuru Robinson, you need to write your rap as well cuz there's so many people who are coming in and out of this dialogue and saying yes, yes. And 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 Rock by Jen, uh, JM said this beautiful thing about look at the ten, the tension release that was that versus battle with Bounty and Beanie and Ooh. how they helped the whole world to heal. And okay. like dance hall is therapy for the universe. Honestly, I I I have no words. There are no words to express how I felt when I was Listen man, may I watch it and but could I feel all of this covid tension just leave my body. Mm. I wasn't even I wasn't even locked in anymore. It felt like I was at a dance for real. I was outside. I was with people, a whole heap of people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we were having a good time together. It it took away all of the the all of the negativity of this period. Yeah. And it just became a celebration, a good time. It brought me back um to some spaces I used to be in and I know that it brought a lot of people back and it also brought some new kids to a new space and yeah. they love it just as much it, 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 I can't I can't thank Beanie and Bounty enough and I can't thank the organizers everybody involved Sharon Burke all of who was there that was a great thing and we should not let that just be a moment and and that's my point because you know moments like that right Sanya we look at it and we say oh man that was such a great performance or that was such a great moment that helped us heal from our traumas. But listen, there are young children in schools in Jamaica right now that are being traumatized by the instruction that is hyper formal. Obey at once. Listen to what I have to say. Memorize your book. Hear it like and those young folks, they are being stressed out just like we are being stressed out by the pandemic. And if Bounty and Beanie can release our pressures for the pandemic, okay. the pandemic that is poor schooling can be released through bringing science genius to the classroom. And I want us to make these connections. Don't think it's okay for you to heal while you send your child to a school to be traumatized because the same it's a cross gener dance hall is a cross generational healing mechanism that if embraced can allow us all to be more whole. You know what I mean? And so like what's your what's your stance on the cross generational nature of infusing dance hall into the education system? Oh wow. Well, first of all, let me just get to us um decriminalizing dancehall. Yeah. Uh, destigmatizing dancehall because dancehall is us. And and criminalizing it or or stigmatizing it is like it's it's one of the 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 most disgusting forms of self-hatred because it is us. It's a beat. You don't have to like every song. Mm. Nobody likes every song, but dancehall is us. Yes. So every process that we have should include us and if dance all is us put it in the process yeah. <laughs> and we have yeah. to ask ourselves why we don't and you know i didn't want to get too heavy for this talk and 
These are the dialogues that you and I always have, right? And I was talking to somebody who's in the Poconos right now, going to the BLM Mash and Rally. And, and when it was over, he said he got into his car, and 90s dance on mix played, and, and half the parks started dancing. And I, I, I thank you for saying that, because I want us all to understand that our music is our release. Our music is our therapy. And our music is also our learning. And as a person who was doing the hip-hop work, I, I always, anytime I get a chance to say this, is to let folks who are in hip-hop understand that if, there were, if it was not for dance hall setting the model through Cool Herc, there will be no hip-hop. So when you celebrate hip-hop, but you denigrate dance hall, or when you celebrate black music and cultural expression, but you say, oh, dance hall, like that's the stuff I only listen to, you know, on, you know, on my own, on the side, but when I'm out and about, I refuse that. What you're doing is you're refusing and denying your own history. And when you're embracing somebody else's version of your story, but not embracing your own story, what kind of self-hatred is that? You know what I mean? So we've got to celebrate and reclaim dance hall and, and reframe dance hall and we celebrate dance hall. And that's part of the decolonization process is to love yourself and where you come from. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and can you imagine where dance hall will go? Because mm -hmm. this is not just going to help the kids with their academics. This is going to also help our culture. When our kids come out of this, reinforced, embraced, nurtured in the process, can you imagine where dance hall will go? Mm. And, if, and if dance hall is going there, that means that we're going somewhere. Of One of my course, favorite quotes by like our most yeah. deaf in regards to hip-hop, he said, people always ask you most, where's hip-hop going? He said, where hip-hop is going is where the people are going. If the people are sad, hip-hop's going to be sad. If, if hip-hop, if the people are in a revolutionary spirit, then hip-hop is going to represent that. And I think for dance hall, where's dance hall going? If science genius can give us a, a, a binoculars into the binocular view of the future of dance hall, where dance hall is going is full embrasure, the merging of its multiple selves, and the revealing of the complexities of each of the artists, um, like you and your genius. Now, so my next question for you, um, Tanya, is, is you know, you have a, you have a, 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 a view as being a rabble rouser, a, 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 a shaker upper. No, you know, listen, Tanya, when, when these are what people, I think it's our beauty and we must embrace it all. And, and, and I always say that people who, people who shake things up are always hated when they're shaking, but never appreciated when it's been shook. You know, when you come up with the idea, they say, what? why would you do that? And then when it's seen differently later on, you're like, oh, Wait, for a second, I'll give you an example. When Tanya Stevens was talking about Jamaican culture and our collective need to know, to, to highlight the fact of how we treat black women and girls within the culture, a couple years back, and everybody's like, why would you bring this up? This is so problematic. And then years later, people are like, yo, we want to create laws in the land to ensure this doesn't happen. What does it do to you to have vision? How? How are you? How do you deal with vision when folks can't see yet where you're going? Sometimes I get a little bit impatient, but um, I understand because I'm I'm a work in progress. We're all works in progress, and the more we can do together, the more we can achieve. Mm. So it it is not my intention to alienate anybody. Sometimes I end up, um, you know, kind of doing that, but it's not the intention. Um, uh, it's just that it's it's a hard thing to come out of the programming that put us where we are. Mm. So it's going to take some time. So even when I see people, people react even violently to me. Sometimes I still understand, and I, I I'm not mad at them. I mm. I get annoyed in the moment, but then I get over it, and I'm not mad at them. I know where they're coming from because we come from the same place. We come from the same space. They're my people. I am their people. So this work is not about me. I can't mm. afford my ego to take any bruising inside of this because it's really not about me. It's a child that I used to be who had very little opportunity. I'm, I'm lucky. And I, I'm, I'm not going to charge anybody else to be uh, exactly as lucky as I was because I know that the, the particular set of circumstances that put me together, um, it doesn't happen to everybody. You know, even if I have some talent, it doesn't matter. There are, I, my background singers are more tal talented than me. So mm. the fact is there are some luck, luck involved. And then, and then I have a different um, way of viewing things and thinking. 
um, and that helps. But I have a responsibility now that I'm in this spot to, to bring the conversation further because it's uh-huh. really not about me. I love that you're doing what you're doing and I know that you know it's not about you because none of this, you've already gone through school. You've already, you're already, you are. And, and ev- what, everything that's being done here is going to bring some kids, well, we are, the, let's say we're foundation. Mm. The which will be built on us will be monument. Oh. And that is what I look for. Knowing that it doesn't really matter, nothing matters. When I'm gone, everything I've done will stand and it will be built on and it will get bigger and better and continue going. So that, that is the only thing that I'm focused on. I get impatient, but at the end of the day, I'm going to come back and try a different way. Mm. And I, I, I like what you're doing because you've been an educator for a while and you've seen what doesn't work and you try a different way. Yeah. And you see, this is, this is what we do. And when you try your different, when you're do, you guys are doing your different way and I recognize the value in it. So I say, hey, let me in. <laughs> I have to be a part of this. This is, mm. a, this is about improving on the collective and work like this is hard work, is spirit work and I'm happy that you're doing it and I'm glad for the opportunity to be a part of it. That's the only thing we can do. We can't, we can't get mad when people don't get it at first. We have to come back again, put some sugar, put a little condensed milk and come back again. That's wisdom. So I, like that's such wisdom and such beauty and you know, for, for, for a science genius, you know, we're rolling this out for Jamaica because we believe in Jamaica, we believe in dance hall, we believe in the youth. And we also understand, and I, I, the reason why I ask is because I know that some folks are on here right now or are going to hear about this project and they're going to say no. You know, they're going to say, why would you bring dance hall to the classroom? Why you have this guy coming here come convince you of that? What's Renee doing? What, you know, there's going to be a lot of whys. Why is this person an ambassador? Did you hear their song? Did you hear their thought? Did you hear the idea? Did you hear their past? And I think that, you know, why we do Science Genius is just so beautifully captured um, by you and what you just said. And, and if you're watching this right now um, and, you're, and you're like, I'm not sure, know that it doesn't matter if you're not sure because there's something in your soul that's saying this is right. Like my child needs to be a part of this project. I, I wish I had it. Don't let the formal structure dictate where your spirit and soul is telling you to go. We know for a fact that our babies need our culture. Don't let somebody's perception of what you should be doing Define where you know your spirit is telling you to do it. Good teaching is spirit work. You know what I mean? Revolutionary work is spirit work. And Tanya, you, you capture that um, so brilliantly in that articulation that not only does that speak to the spirit of science genius, but I also learn something from that because I, I go through that all the time too. Um, you know, why, why, are you, why are you spending your time doing this when you could be doing that? And it's like, because my soul says is what I should be doing in this moment. And, and I wish all of us could operate more from a place of soul and spirit and passion rather than what folks define for us. So boom, now we want to go to the next part. So Tanya, <laughs> right now, you're going to have some, some 12-year-old, 13-year-old right in these bars. You are a science genius ambassador. What are you saying directly to the young folks? How are you, how are you coaching? How are you motivating? How are you seeing yourself in your role as this Science genius ambassador for the young folks. Well, I want to tell them, do not think about this as it's not schoolwork. It's hard work. It's fun work. It's your work. It's your fun. Mm. Um, do not think of it as you're, you're doing homework or a test or anything like that. Think about it like you're on the corner with your friends and you're playing marble. You're playing jacks. You're playing skipping. You know? You didn't be playing Mother May I. And the way you feel when you're doing all of that, the fun that you're having, the way you express, express yourself, put that into your lyrics. And when we're in class in school in Jamaica, I know that most kids do this. We beat on the desks. Yes. We beat, beat a rhythm on the desk. And we sing about anything. We can sing about guava, mango, star apple. We can sing about the homework, the teacher, what we like, the teacher, what we don't like. Put it in your lyric. Put it in your lyric, the spirit of that, and make the topic be about science. And that's it. You have it. You already have it. This is something that's already inside of you. You don't need Chris or Renee or me or Tifa 
or Wayne Marshall or anybody else. You don't need Sasko to tell you how to do it. We're just here to guide you to you because you're already there. Mm. The, 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 the beauty of like, like when you speak like the, the radical hope that you have for these babies, man. Oh, but I know them. Chris, I meet them every day. Mm. And they never disappoint me. Never, not once. Not once. And there's no such thing as a, as a dunce child. There's no such thing as a hopeless child, a, a bad child. I do, not, I do not believe any of that. I have met them in their rawest form. I've met them hungry. I've met them without clothes, without a home, without parents, without hope. And they've still smiled through all of it. I managed to give me a little rap and said something to, to entertain me, to show me love. I get the sweetest hugs, the, the, the most touching. And this is where my got an older man now and start break up because kids inspire me every day, everywhere. Mm. Me, them always inspire me. That's why I know they have it. Yeah. This is why I know it's there. The only time it disappears is when adults kill it. Yeah. So our, the, the, our job isn't that hard. It, our job is just to protect it from being killed. Mm -hmm. Because it's already there. It's alive and well right now. Our job... You know, I want to say this too because that was so but, magical. Like our job is to protect the genius of our babies. Yes. But for the adults and the grown folks, the teachers who are here... Part of our job also is to reclaim the genius of ourselves. I think I, I, like someone here is listening to this and saying, okay, this sounds good for the kids. You know, what about me? Or, or you know, I could never do this. Listen, learning is an ever-evolving process. The most genius folks of our time have come to this thing late, reclaimed their genius, and, and made it happen again. Look, Tony, let me tell you something. The other day I was saying, I said, yo, I, I'm, I'm sitting here now with this professor job. Yo, I'm about to just go back to the studio and make an album, man. I'm going to get Tanya Stevens to do a, do a feature for me on my track. And, and I mean it because I think that we have been conditioned to believe that there's a finiteness to our claiming of who we are or discovery of who you are. And I don't want to do it to sell a million albums. I just want to do it because I want to know that I can do it. I want to do it to feel the joy that I get from listening to create. And I think... The, the, there's a, we all live in cycles and we live in moments and when you allow your cycle to die and it no longer turns you know some folks are alive and dead breathing every day but have nothing to live for and I think we don't want the young folks to feel that and I don't want the grown ups listening to feel that as well redefine yourself, recreate yourself matter of fact, write your science genius rap and perform it for the kids and motivate them you know what I mean? Show them that show them that you are actually cool. Because mm -hmm. too many of us adults think it's think it's not cool to show that we're cool. You know, like mm -hmm. we feel, we can lie to like we, we think oh you get to a certain age, I know you have to start acting a different way. No, you're still the same you. It's okay for you to be cool and responsible. To, to be cool and mature. So instead of you sitting there thinking, I'm the adult, I have to have all my pleats <laughs> in place, you know. And I can't break a sweat and I can't. You can do all of that. You can mm -hmm. you can be a fool and still be the authority figure because acting a fool is natural and it's human and it's a part. And, and then this is not even acting a fool. I mean, I say act a fool because I love to act a fool. It makes me human and it reconnects me with my inner child. Yeah. You know? And I would invite all the adults to become a, come, up, come be a part of this. Write your own rhymes because some people out there I am I'm one of the few people, Chris, who push past family and friends and naysayers from our walks of life. You know, like when you when you come into music, music is not seen as a real job. I was yeah. go, go 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 get a real job. And I know that a lot of people heard this and didn't bother to pursue their dreams. Passion. Yeah. But their passion was, whether it was music or something else. And if you have that rhyme inside of you. You had it there since you were in primary school. You had it there since you were in high school. And somebody tried to kill a rhyme. It's still there. Let it out. We have some beats. Take one of them. Put your rhyme on it. Let out the child because... Put some science in there. Wrap it up and drop something. Drop something. You, the, the kid has been in there suffering for decades. Mm. Let them out. Just make them come out and play for one day. Just, just come out. Take your pen and paper and sit down and make the wickedest science rhyme anybody ever heard. Surprise yourself, you know?
just come out and do it man and and I want to tell you something to challenge you she me because me know say everybody like for say the Tanya singing girl can write Sasko can write Marshall can write Tifa can write come out she me write a better rhyme than we yes yes cuz you are parent and you stay at home mom no mean eh nobody feel like no more that mean <laughs> come out and drop your rhyme too it's not it's not limited to just kids and the teachers parents mother you the home and you cook breakfast and you cook lunch and you cook dinner and you do the laundry you are a great homemaker and your kids are learning and them well fed and them healthy but you have the rhyme inside of you mhm that's inside of you where you're suppressed because they told you that when you grew to a certain age you have to start behave a certain way it was a lie now make them suppress you no more come out take your beat Oof. go get the get your beat Put your rhyme on it. We're going to have a great time together. Let all yeah. and, and as Mister, yeah, man, and show our genius again. And like, I want to say this to everyone too. Like, every single Wednesday at eight thirty, we're gonna have these chats. Sometimes I'll host. Sometimes Renee Ratchet will host. The brilliant, beautiful, magical Renee Ratchet will host. And 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 this is, you know, if you're here today, come back next week with a new guest, and new folks, and new people, and 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 get this inspiration. Again, to reclaim that spirit and also reclaim the spirit in our babies and our young people. Listen, Tanya, I can't keep you much longer because I know you've already given us so much of your, your time. But just remember, everybody, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. Jamaica time, 8.30 East Coast time. Make the other adjustments if you're in other time zones. Follow Science Genius Challenge Jamaica on Instagram. Follow the Queen Ambassador Tanya Stevens. Follow Teach Good, Lead Good, J.A., and, and, and let's, let's get this thing done to change the vision of dance hall, to change the possibilities for the young folks in Jamaica and really make some magic in the world. Tanya, any final words you want to share? I'm going to be back every Wednesday. Yeah. I might not be, I'm, I might not be the guest, but I'll be in the comment section because I am in this. I, I'm, I'm really in this and I'm looking forward to, to seeing all the parents, the kids, the, teachers come out and make this thing the awesome amazing thing that it is we have to change the face of everything that doesn't work for us and we have to do it together because it's ours it is ours and we can't give it up ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining us shout out to the brilliant beautiful magical thoughtful creative I mean, tonight you preached you inspired you i mean oh all of it uh tanya stevens i'm so thankful to share space with you I know what it means for you to use your platform to elevate this work for young people, and I'm forever indebted to you for it. Shout out to the whole team, Kalando, Renee, Sasko, Way Marshall, um, and Siobhan, the whole squad, and shout out to every young person in Jamaica who's gonna, we already know you're gonna wow us with your genius, and we can't wait to, what you, to hear what you have to offer us. Prizes to come, celebrations to come. Peace to everybody. Yeah, respect.